best friends when I was in my early 20s was a card magician named Jack Parker. I'd heard about him online, people were talking about him, this, this new guy who was creating tricks, but nobody knew who he was, yet the tricks were just incredible. And I tracked him down, he lived a few hours away from me, and we formed a friendship that went on for a long time. And I was amazed at the quality of his card magic. He wasn't like other people just creating variations of tricks. He was taking new plots, carving new methods and new ways. And Jack wasn't the most sophisticated sleight of hand performer. In fact, most of his magic is quite easy, but he thought in different ways to other people. His magic was visual, clever, fun, interesting, and like I say, almost always very easy to perform. But then bad news came in 2006, Jack was in his 30s and uh, was diagnosed uh, with sadly cancer that was uh, going to kill him quite quickly. Uh, I'd always wanted to write a book of Jack's magic and the opportunity came but kind of at the wrong time. Uh, so Jack wanted me to write his legacy and we came up with the concept of 52 of his favourite tricks and called the book 52 Memories. But this isn't a sad book, it's not a something we should look down on. It's a celebration of Jack's amazing magic and his amazing life that he shared with us here. So I spent three, four months writing this book, which anybody who writes magic books will tell you is not much time at all, but I had to do it quickly so that I could get all of Jack's thoughts down. In fact, I even quit my day job so I could finish this book. And we released it in, uh, I think it was 2007, uh, and it was a bestseller. It sold out Within a couple of years, the, the books were out of circulation and they sell on eBay for hundreds of dollars. They're very hard to find. But I was never that happy with the book. Uh, a lot of people tell me it's my, my best writing and my best work, but I just wasn't happy. It was rushed. Uh, as you can tell, I didn't have much time and I wanted it to be as good as I can. Uh, and there were a few things I weren't happy with. So this was now my opportunity. I spent the last year and a half writing, uh, rewriting the book. Um, heavily editing it, I guess is a better phrase, and adding new illustrations and reworking the illustrations. I was never happy with them in the book. It's a two color print, uh, which is the same as the first edition, but it's a different size, and the tricks are much clearer now. So let's talk about the magic. Let's talk about Jack's tricks. Uh, I'll tell you some of my favorites. If you like the Hofzinser plot, the, the famous Hofzinser problem, uh, this is the best version, hands down. I've never seen a better version than the one that is in Jack's book, or the Thomas Crown Affair, which is a trick of truly of legend. Jack performed this trick remotely by videotape for some of the best car magicians in the world at TSD, fooled every single person in the room, and it's taught in here. Uh, another favorite is a trick of Three Stooges. Jack performs the classic McDonald's Aces style assembly, but the spectators do all the work. They're on stage with you, and they make the cards manage from their own packet in their own hands. It, it's incredible. So there are 52 tricks in here, nothing is that difficult. Most of them are card tricks, uh, but there are some great moves as well. If you, um, if you like fancy double lifts and flourishes, Jack's Ballerina Double is so clever yet so easy, you'll be able to do it the first time you read it. Uh, there's a trick with a ring, there's a trick with a Coke can, and, and many other tricks. If you're the kind of person who wants to sit and learn card tricks and follow along with your deck in your hands, this is the book for you. It's the book I'm finally proud to, to bring Jack's legacy to life once again. So, 52 memories by my great friends, the, the late Jack Parker. I hope you enjoy the book and I hope this brings back Jack's memories and I hope you have a great time performing his magic.